Okay, so today we're going to talk about loss functions. The goal here is to become familiar with some of the most common ways to measure error. So we have to choose a way to, uh, to quantify how close our output is to the target. So we have a neural network and we get some output, but we have a target that we want to match. How do we measure how close we were or how far away we were? For this, we use a cost function, which is also often called an objective function or a loss function or an error function. So I will use those three or four terms interchangeably. So there are many choices, but here I'm going to talk about three main choices. For context, let's start with a data set with pairs of uh, inputs and output targets, x, i, t, i, where i goes from 1 to n. So for the input x, i, the network's output is y, i. And we can represent the uh, operation of the network using this function notation f of x, i, given the sets of weights and biases, the parameters of the network in theta. So the first um, a loss function we'll talk about is mean squared error, or MSE. So the loss, given an output y and a target t, is 1 half y minus t 2 squared. So this is meant to be the 2 norm, or Euclidean norm, or Cartesian norm, squared though. So ultimately, um, if y and t are, are vectors, this is just like the square of the length of the vector. Taking the expectation or mean over the entire data set then gives us our error function. Um, maybe I'll not, not include that. 1 over n, i equals 1 to big N, y, i, t, i. So we're taking the average loss, or the expected loss of the whole data set. So the use of the mean squared error as a cost function is often associated with linear activation of functions, or ReLU. ReLU is kind of linear on one side anyway. So this loss function activation function pair, MSE with, with a linear activation function, is often used for regression problems. So we'll see that come up later. Second cost function I'd like to talk about is cross entropy, or also called Bernoulli cross entropy. I often put a hyphen in here, although I'm not I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to continue that. So consider the task of classifying inputs into two categories, labeled zero and one. Our neural network model for this task will output a single value between zero and one. So x is input, and then we have our neural network do its thing and it outputs a y, and here I'm saying it's it's in the open interval 0 to 1, or it could be a closed interval 0 to 1. The true class of the expressed target is some is either 0 or a 1. So the target is a 0 or a 1. If we suppose that y is the probability that x is a 1, that sorry, that x is of class 1, then we can say y equals the probability x is of class 1 given the, the parameters theta is f of x given theta. So that's the output of the network. We just take the output of the network and interpret that as the probability that our uh, the input was of class 1. So we can write this as a Bernoulli distribution. The probability x is of class 1 equals y, i.e. the target was 1 or the probability that x is of class 0 is 1 minus y, i.e. the target equals 0. So um, y tells us the probability of both it being class 1 and being class 0, because 1 minus y is the probability it's the other class. Right, we can actually combine those two formulas together. So the likelihood of our data sample the likelihood of observing our data sample given our model is x is of the probability x is of class t is y to the t times 1 minus y to the 1 minus t. And this works for both classes. So if t equals 0, the first part is y to the 0. 
and that part disappears, and you just get 1 minus y to the 1. Okay, if t equals 1, just work it out yourself. You'll see that the second part disappears. Okay, now the task of learning would be finding the model or the set of parameters theta that maximizes this likelihood. Or we could equivalently minimize the negative log likelihood, which is what uh, the cross entropy is. <clears throat> so L of y t is, I'll leave it for you as an exercise, but if you take the log of that, um, you get something that looks like this, t log y plus one minus t log one minus y. And this log likelihood formula is the basis of the cross entropy loss function. So the expected cross entropy over the entire data set, not just a single sample, but over the entire data set, then can be written E. So you'll, you might notice that I, use, I often use L as the loss function, something that we can look at on a, on a single sample basis. And E, I usually use as the uh, cost function over the averaged over the whole data set. So E is the expected, uh, expected value of that log likelihood. So I'll take the negative sign outside. Ti log yi plus one minus ti log one minus yi over the data set. And then we can rewrite that as negative one over n times the sum for i equals one to big N of ti. Um, I'm gonna use ln here now ln yi, it's natural log, plus 1 minus ti ln 1 minus yi. So cross entropy oop, assumes that the output values are in the range 0 to 1. So it works nicely with the logistic activation function. Remember, logistic returns values between 0 and 1. It's actually open interval 0 and 1. So you'll see on the assignments and on the in the exercises um, how nicely those two fit together, that logistic activation function with the cross entropy loss function. Um, joke break. Here's a joke. Five out of six people say Russian roulette is safe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, quiet. Okay, the last one I want to talk about is categorical cross entropy, or called sometimes called multinuly cross entropy. I think I've also called, heard it called multinomial cross entropy. Okay, so now it's not just two classes. Now we have k classes where k is bigger than two. Consider a classification problem that has k classes k bigger than two. Given an input, the task of our model is to output the class of the input, or estimate the class of the input. So for example, given an input of in, an image as input of a digit, we want to determine the digit class. Given a picture of a four, we want to determine that it's class four. And of course, there are 10 different digit classes. So suppose our model is given the input x and the network's output is y, which comes from f of x, given our parameters theta. So we interpret y sub k as the probability of x being from class k. So y, this output y then, is not just a single number anymore. Uh, I guess y will be an element of um, 0, 1 to the power k, big K. Come on. Where we have k classes. So, for example, y could be 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.95, all between 0 and 1. <clears throat> okay, um, well, that's a bad example, actually, because um, 
we also need that y is a distribution of x's membership to the k different classes. So we actually need that if you add up all the y's, they equal 1. So let me go back and re, uh, reconsider my example here. 0.95 is too big. Let's see, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, uh, that's 0.4. And then let me uh, finish off then. That's uh, 0 0.3. So if you add all those up, I think you get uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah. You get a total of 1. Okay. So why the output of the network is actually a distribution over the different classes. The probability that the input belongs to each class. Under that distribution, suppose we observed a sample from class K. So the likelihood, the likelihood of that observation is probability X is from class C K hat or bar, sorry, given theta equals Y sub K hat where C sub K uh, hat equals the set of inputs X such that X is from class K hat. So I just introduced a bit of notation there. C sub K is the set of inputs that belong to class K. So note that Y is a function of the input X in the model parameters theta. Um, Okay, the, I put that statement in there for a reason that is not relevant now. Okay, if we represent the target class using the one hot vector t equals a whole bunch of zeros with a single one, then more zeros, and that single one happens at k hat, that's the that's our output target then it's, it's a one hot vector that indicates the particular target class given that vector that output the sort of the target vector we can rewrite the, the log likelihood sorry we can rewrite the likelihood that I wrote above this thing here in a different format probability of X being from class C sub k hat given theta is the product for k going from 1 to big K of y sub k to t to the power t sub k. Now this is actually the same sort of thing as the uh, cross entropy which comes from Bernoulli um, just big K equals 2 and uh, you can work out the details. So just like we did for Bernoulli to get cross entropy Remember, cross entropy is the negative log probability from Bernoulli, from the Bernoulli distribution. So we're going to do the same thing. The negative log probability or the negative log likelihood um, of observing x is negative log of that probability is negative sum from k equals 1 to big K of t k log y k. Same log, log trick we'd use for Bernoulli. So this loss function is known as categorical cross entropy. L of y t is negative the sum over the categories t sub k log y sub k. And again, that log could be natural logarithm. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so over the entire data set of n samples, we take the average or the expected value of the cross entropy. So we'll say E is the expected value of that. Um, Maybe we'll do this i, i, oops, having some struggles here over the data set. And we could rewrite that as negative sum 
over the whole data set of the of the cross entropy loss the cross entropy loss we can write like this t k y um right i need more subscripts let me do this t class k but for sample i y uh no need log log y class k for sample i so those aren't exponents in the superscript that's for sample i and um since the output of our network has to be a distribution has to add up to one this cost function the the categorical cross entropy cost function works well with softmax you recall that softmax um, outputs discrete distributions 